Um, hello and welcome to another edition of the Nde Olital show. Um, as usual, I do my best to bring you Gambia's best. And when I say Gambia's best, tonight you have one of Gambia's best. Um, uh, I'm not going to go into my details, but we're going to go for a short break. When we come back, I'll introduce this amazing Gambian gentleman. Stay tuned, don't go anywhere. Welcome back to the studio. And um, with me today, I have um, one of your people, um, a very well-rounded Gambian young man. And his name is Mamadou Njai. He's a social um, entrepreneur. Mamadou, welcome to the Nday Olital show. Thank you so much, Nday. It's a pleasure to be here. It's yeah. amazing to it's have amazing. you here. Yeah, sure. Likewise. You're such a fine gentleman. You're doing so much. And um, you have been everywhere, you know. It's a honor. Yeah. You know, flying the um, Gambian flag high. Whether you know it or not, I don't know, because you seem to be a person that is kind of shy away from the amazing things that you do, <laughs> which is yeah. very nice and humbling. <laughs> we get into that more. But tell us more about who Mamadou Njai, Njai is. Well, thank you so much for providing me with the opportunity. And, you know, I got to confess that you're doing also amazing stuff. And really, I try. I'm showcasing Gambia's, uh, you know, uh, the people that are really change makers in this country is mm -hmm. really fascinating so i applaud you for that oh, thank you yeah just as you said i'm just i'm, I'm just a young gambian born and raised here mm -hmm. um you know um, gambia from saracuna wow. you know raised by a single parent um, you know um was my dad at uh, at a very early age i think i was two something Aww. like that so yeah you know it was my mom who did everything Wow. You know, in a capacity to to build me up, you know, paid everything to make sure I went to the proper school. And That's a super me. mom. That's the yeah, hero. Yeah, so shout out to her. And, yes. Yeah, and then decided to to sift my life and understand it, uh, conceptual, uh, conceptualize it, mm -hmm. you know, um, in order to be where I am today. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's a tough life, but we're grateful to be here. How was that life for you? Because um, you're a boy, obviously. Um, when we are raised by our mothers or father, I think we come out differently. Yeah. And for some people, there's this misconception that you need to have your father there, whether dead or alive, to yeah. be to grow up to be a strong man or to grow up to be a, you know, you need to have your mother there to grow up to be an amazing woman. You are raised by your mom, and I think you're such a fine gentleman. What what, what did your mom do right? But I think my mom. You know, like you know, like I think my mom took the father, okay. uh, fatherhood role. Yeah. Uh, my mom fought with me in 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 I mean in a lot of instances, <laughs> and um, I think one of the most important element of parenthood is really understanding the society that you that you're coming from. And I was from Serkuna, mm -hmm. you know, which was like pretty much so um, so busy and you know yeah, you have it's very like vibrant. businesses you have shops you have live you have you know the gangsters out there and then you're in the middle of it and then you're also in the middle of like a whole extended family you know right. and then and then it's like you can feel the f I mean the fear mm -hmm. you know like you know that's how I grew up you know I grew up seeing my mom like really self-conscious about how we should be okay and and I think that was very critical. Mm -hmm. So I think she really used a lot of emotional intelligence on us, mm -hmm. um, considering where we were and right. looking at the older uncles and the aunties yes. and you know whole different bunch of kids that mm -hmm. you know it was like a rat race. Wow, well, yeah. Um, and then in my case, it was all about my mom and my other siblings. So it's like my mom trying to make her understand the vision at a very early age, and I think that was key. Mm -hmm. in setting the standards for all of us like really hey you know you're coming from this neighborhood but this is where i want you to be and she fought to make sure we understood that i remember there are times where i really felt very comfortable in my educational career mm -hmm. and i was really at some point i was really doing amazing stuff mm -hmm. and then at some point peer influence kind of really at some point really wanted to get me off which mm -hmm. a lot of gambian you oh, go of course to. yeah but then she was really very self-conscious at that time to put and back could, and say, yeah hey. There are times where yeah. my mom would like 
I mean, really, really get at me, you know, at times where I see you pour water on us and, you know, like those kind of <laughs> yes. things, like really, like you can't get away, like you just it's have to be love. this way. Yeah. yeah. And then the other part of her was really trying to get us to be really, um, you know, a people's person, you know, and, mm. I mean, I think I grew up having this passion to really help and, you know, like understanding the theories. Um, that went ahead when my dad was alive and then just feeling that emotions and oh. I mean listening to those stories that that was the life that he lived and I was like I wanted to be like him oh. even though I didn't get a chance to see him but it was like you know oh all this amazing stuff I heard about my dad helping people sacrificing I also wanted to be this person and it translates to what I'm doing right now as a social entrepreneur and even with the neighborhood with the boys I was this kind of person that was switching personalities from now and then, I could come and sit with the boys, drink a tie. The next day, they see me with a suit and tie. <laughs> and then, you Multiple know. Multiple personality. Yeah, and then, <laughs> so I was trying to get them to understand that, you know, like, you know, it's, it isn't about being a gangster, putting your trousers under your waist, but it was more of about really just living the life mm-hmm. and also um, being very careful mm-hmm. about, you know, some of the things that could hurt you in the future. Yeah. But not a lot of the young people have that mold though. So it's really strange. I think in my in my area it was more of about grace of God and my mom mm-hmm. that got me here. That's amazing. That's yeah. that's an amazing story. You absolutely are a formidable young young man and people that mm-hmm. know you know this. Um how was school like for you? What school did you go to? What were your interests as a young man going to school and your choices? Uh, okay. Um, yeah, I was, I mean, in my neighborhood, people thought I was like, you know, uh, I mean, I went to Arabic school. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I used to do the, you know, the chronic versions. I used to be very good at it. Um, and then again, I transitioned into, um, you know, like, you know, the normal schooling that mm-hmm. we go through, the mm-hmm. primaries and mm-hmm. whatnot. Um, you know, but I was very explorative of being a footballer. You know, I oh. to be, yeah, you know. What a tall footballer you Yeah, were exactly. Game. And I was a striker. You're super tall, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so basically, I had this forte of being a footballer. Oh. And I was very good at it um, during my childhood. So, a lot of people in the neighborhood knew that when they have football games, they used to come and get me off, mm-hmm. you know, from the house. So. Oh. Um, but then I was very, I mean, I was very disciplined with my with my schooling. I went to Saracuna School mm-hmm. and then transitioned to LK. We were in the best class mm-hmm. uh, with some of the guys like Steve, the footballers that you see, like mm-hmm. we were in the same class and yeah. then moved to Naos. Oh. You know, that's where I graduated. And then, you know, you know, life, there's a whole lot of life after school. So yeah. I think, I think there is a whole lot of stuff that I was just like, I mean, I was this person that was just, studying stuff like i just wanted to be you know i had this hunger i had this hunger to be you know i used to dream of you know i mean at a young age like wearing you know working for the un you know and you know all this crazy stuff. that's so bold (laughs) even when i even when i left school i used to just dress up um, neatly put on my student you would think i'm working in office words i wasn't (laughs) <laughs> I, would just, I mean, I would just get out from my, you know, from my company. I just sat out and people were like, you know, I just wanted that respect, you know. Yeah. I would come out and sit drinking attire, but then with, you know, a shiny full shoe and then, you know, with a tie and with no job. But then in my head, That's this, ambitious. Is, this is the kind of person I wanted to be. And yeah. then my uncles will sit around me, they'll be teaching me about life. But deep inside, I'm like, hell no, I don't want to be sitting here for the next two years. So yeah. I want to do something. Yeah. But yeah, I mean... It's just the mindset. The mindset. That's yeah. amazing. Um, you stated something very, um, very. I don't know if it's obvious or not. But other people say that um, starting your education from a Quranic background, like doing Arabic, for example, not Quranic Arabic, yeah. and then transitioning into a like a English learning system, it speeds you up and it makes you super intelligent. Would yeah, you say that believe, is true? Yeah, I kind of believe that because like. Um, you know, I wouldn't, I mean, I thank God, but I think I was really good at the Quranic side. Mm-hmm. Like, um, you know, at that time too, when I was in the Quranic, I, you know, I was almost like ahead of these old guys that were there. And I used to do the tarees when we have this Quranic, you know, um, you know, like recitation. And I was just there. So it was really a good start for me. And I think kind of opened up the heart for me to, you know, you see a light in it. So, mm-hmm. I mean, I'm a firm believer. Mm-hmm. Um, in God, not mm-hmm. just being a Muslim, but you know, you know, in the lot of ethics in life and how to help people, how to understand life, how to move with people. I mean, it teaches you a lot, mm-hmm. and I think most people don't understand that. It. It's not only about the prayer side, but you know, 
you know, Islam teaches us to, to really be compassionate, mm -hmm. you know, with mm -hmm. each other. So I think these are values that you get, you know, from this um, Quranic school. The human, human, yeah, um, the human, human side traits, yeah. yeah. So, um, Which um, is very key as well. It is key. Human development. Yeah, yeah, human development. Before we go on our break, first break, I'm just going to ask you something. No, I'm going to ask you to pretend that I am the young you, like yeah. maybe when you were 10, 12 years old. Yeah. Um, what would you say to that um, Mamadou sitting here right now? Um, I was very stubborn. Um, so what would, pretend that I am you at that age. What would you tell me, being where you are now in life? Would you say we've made it, we've done it, or we're getting there? What would you say to him? When I look back on that, yeah, I would say that we have, uh, we're getting there. We mm -hmm. haven't, well, I mean, it depends on how people view me. Yeah. Uh, people that really know me at a very early age. Some people will be surprised. Some people would not be surprised. But I think I think we've gotten really, really far from really where we wanted to be. Mm -hmm. And um, I mean, sometimes I feel like it doesn't really matter. But yeah, I mean, I mean, I'm thankful. I think looking back at my life and looking at all the guys that I grew up with, the self-respect that they have, and seeing the transition from us doing crazy stuff and now seeing me, I was like, I mean, is that you? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, awesome. so, so you're going to tell him, is that you? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's me, but a lot of changes. A lot of changes. Yeah, On oh, that note, we're going to go for a short break. <laughs> when we come back, we chat more. I think this guy is super interesting. You don't talk much, but I'm going to get you to say a lot today. So stay tuned. Your favorite QSAL service has gotten bigger. e Kanta. Now you can loan bigger credit amounts to make life easier for you. Loan $75 and $100 and pay later. Yes, you heard me right. Get credit loan from $10 to $100 using Ifa Kanta by dialing star 393 hash. Anytime you run out of credit, whether you want to buy Q Power, browse the internet, make urgent calls, or send SMS, Ifa Kanta is the service for you. Dial star 393 hash and choose the loan amount of your choice with no hassle. For more information, call our customer care on 111. QSEL, Sunyabas, the pioneers of mobile loan service in the Gambia. We innovate, others follow. Terms and conditions apply. Welcome back to the show. I'm still here with our social entrepreneur, uh, Mamadou Ainjai. Now, before we went on that break, we went on a very interesting journey about right. your childhood about your mom and being a young man and where you were raised now take us to where you are now obviously you're involved in a lot of things like the startup grind and all that which is doing amazing like you're changing lives in your own i'm not going to say your own little way because this is not little <laughs> so i'm not going to say that statement make that statement right now but how did the dream start because something has been really constant since we started talking is that your passion and just you mentioning a million times I think that you love to help people wanting to help people did that inspire this yeah I think it in, uh, I think it inspired it and I think it also comes back from my experience as well uh -huh. um, you know during the transition of really trying to find myself um, I saw a lot of gap um, you know um, in really trying to get to where I wanted to be. And I felt like this is a very important element for a lot of people out there, for a lot of young people out there. Yeah. Probably a lot of people who are trying to think of going to the Mediterranean Sea to find for greener pastures. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, pastures. I think it's more of about, you know, knowing myself first. You know, and... How does one know themselves, find themselves? Like you know, it's a very tricky it's a very tricky place to be. Um, yeah. I remember at a point in my career, I was working, I was volunteering for a magazine on the UNODC, which is on drugs and crime. Um, I was here in Gambia coordinating all the activities internationally, and we were dealing with mental health. And most of the thing, because at that time too, I had a little bit of breakdown, um, psychologically and mentally, you know, and I wasn't in the right space. And, you know, this is a space that it's very critical for a lot of young people. And I think we don't really consider that much. Like you can see somebody really going out, but they have a lot in their heads. And I think we also as a society don't really uh, pay attention to these things. So 
finding yourself is more of about really um, knowing how to juggle through these emotions that you go through every day and how you interact you know with the society at the same time so it's so it's a bit tough mm -hmm. and I think the mindset is strained you know um, even when you're dealing with mental health it's like trying to get your mind to a safer space mm -hmm. and it could be deadly and it could also be great it depends on what you find at that particular time that really inspires you so that sounds really dark yeah so when i'm doing startup grind or when i got to that space actually before startup grind it was the time that i started to understand that like when you do a program like me and you talking today like you you're giving that person um a little space in him or her to really you know get a bit of motivation okay. and it could it could get a spark you know sometimes individuals need a spark even in terms of mental health or a few other things to actually get to a stage, you know, from one stage to another. It mm -hmm. isn't about money. Mm -hmm. So Is it about emotions? Yeah, it's a bit psychological emotions. Yeah, I think no I mean I think like most people uh, think or to to help people you need to have money or whatever. Yeah. But I think it it isn't about that. I think to help people comes from uh, comes from understanding the other person. Comes mm -hmm. from really trying to be in that space where I feel like, oh, I think I can really be in that journey with Oli. Mm -hmm. And it's just going to make all of us better. Mm -hmm. I think that's the space I was in. And that's the space that interacting with a lot of people on a daily basis, we sharing bread and everything, you know, being in the neighborhood, I felt like, you know what, when I, when I set up this movement, I'm bringing all my boys. In fact, my team was like, these young people, like, oh. my team is like, I would say like, we're just these young guys and, you know, I mean, we did like uh, research together. Um, at that time, I was hired to do the World Bank country profile study for Gambia. And I had the contract and then I got these young guys who were just jobless. I told the guys that, hey, you know what, I have a contract, so let's do it. These are the same people that are working with me as startup guy. When I have an event, they're so... They're yeah, so like so pumped, and, yeah. And then these are young people that lost lost their way, you know. Some of them. And today I'm proud that just being part of the movement now, they're doing amazing stuff. Wow. Some of them, once in a while, they they travel out and do it and, and, and come know, back. So yeah. Like, yeah, that's so cool. This is this is amazing. Tell us about startup growing. Yeah, I mean it's just a global movement um, in 125, um, you know, uh, countries, and you know more than 300 cities in the world. Mm -hmm. And our mission is mainly to educate, inspire, and connect entrepreneurs mm -hmm. to investors, to like-minded people that are doing amazing stuff. Mm -hmm. Because one of the things that we felt like is to be an entrepreneur, you need to be informed. And it goes back to um, why I wanted to do it in Gambia. You know, when I did the country profile for the World Bank, it opened my eyes. I was looking at this data, which was international and ready to be exported outside. And I was seeing a lot of gaps in the ecosystem. In Gambia. Like, yeah, and I felt like, like, this is crazy. It's like you have all of these small businesses that are like really, if we are not careful, they're going to crash. Um, they're not really informed. Oh, dear. They don't know the market. And even though we had a lot of stuff that we happened in like training, but you wanted the next level. You wanted them to be... To be ready. At a level where, and the people that we were bringing, like, you know, who are these guys that you were bringing um, to the platform to help these young people? So... I mean, instead of you being in that lonely journey as an entrepreneur, like you had this movement that you belong to, where you can you can find resources, you can reach out for help. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I think that makes the journey for a lot of the young people better. Like you don't feel alone. Like you don't be in that lonely space alone. Like you feel like I can talk to more. I can talk to somebody. Like, mm -hmm. That's the mission, and that makes it a whole lot of amazing stuff for Gambia. Yeah. Yeah. So. So how are people? and um, entrepreneurs embracing this, I'll say this opportunity. Yeah. Are um, they making good use of it? Do people know about it as well? A lot of people know yeah, that this is, is a, there. Yeah, this is a question that I usually used to, when I was studying, um, it was a bit tough because we were, not, we were not really getting the traction that we needed. But you know, with the movement, you start with one, two, three, and four, and then on to, I think now we've gotten to a space, not only Gambia, you know, even outside of Gambia, we've gotten to a space where you know, we, we, people feel connected to the movement, you know, and then um, 
we we provided opportunities for them to have investment opportunities, funding. You know, several initiatives have been launched under Startup Guide. Currently, in partnership with you know the GAM diaspora funding, where we we trying to bridge the gap with Gambian diaspora to come back home and invest. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I mean, the movement is amazing. It's growing. You know, a lot of people feel part of it when when you host event and you know and open out the application. Wow. It's sold out. You know, like easily and then. I think now they feeling like they can they can be part of the movement and they network share contacts which is amazing because that's that's what the mission was supposed to be about. network as well um, I think what I found here was more of about a disconnected ecosystem where everybody was doing their own thing but everybody in their you know in their own corners and I didn't like it like that I felt like we could be stronger Gambia is so small that everybody knows everybody you know so if we had a movement that mm -hmm. was really kind of connected, it was going to be more impactful. Right. I think my role now is mainly to to get everybody on one board. Like where those conversations are missing and everybody feeling very threatened with each other, I'm like, hell no, I'm going to come and get you guys together. And where does the threat come from? No, I think no, I think what's happened is like, um, you know, I had this in one of my last programs. So a disconnected ecosystem means there's a whole lot of programs on the programs where everybody has different activities, different goals. Mm -hmm. It's like when you look at the people who are coming to these programs, they're almost the same people, if not, because you know Again we're small. So, yeah, and then they um, and then they're revolving around all these ESOs. I call them I mean ESOs, entrepreneur support organization. Mm -hmm. And they're falling back. So imagine you bump into five of them and then you probably get in the same thing. Mm -hmm. So and then, like, all of these people are having their own programs in their own. So it's like we, instead of the triple effect of innovation, we, we're creating the same training effect. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's not really where we want it to be. Mm -hmm. An innovative country, um, an innovative ecosystem wouldn't thrive like that. Okay. Like, all of these people need to know, the data needs to be shared. I mean, if only attends a training here, um, like, he has to like he has to go to another level, like right, not yeah. really having the same training again yeah, and again. Yeah, yeah, you need to develop and yeah. So when we host these events, um, that's where we connect these people. Like we are like using we we using systematic knowledge. Like sometimes when I'm designing this, it's very smart. Yeah, sometimes when I'm designing this program, most people don't know. Like I'm like I'm I'm observing the thread of the same time cementing these guys at the same time pushing the level of innovation mm -hmm. where I want Gambia to be. Mm -hmm. So it's like forcing you to step up. Yeah. You know, yeah. so. Without realizing it. Yeah. So if you are not. Before you know it, yeah. you just bring to. Somebody. Yeah. There's certain conversations that we're having with some of the, like the tech guys that are, some of my friends in the diaspora. Mm -hmm. And we were discussing about it. And last time I was like, Modi, do you know that this conversation, it's going to come probably five years you know, that went five years for these people in mm -hmm. your community to honor them, like, amazing, because they have, they need a blueprint. Yeah. You know, a blueprint where they can, they can I get I think that's what you're doing them. great. Like, yeah. like the sealing that blueprint for Gambia, for us. Yeah. That's where because you're that's, doing a great job. Yeah, because like, that's, that's missing all the, all the people, like all yeah. the ecosystem, whatever you want to find, you I mean, you have it, but here, it's like, you want to find certain data, it's like a challenge. So, what we're doing is like creating all these events that I'm seeing, like, and and also studying all the ecosystems, you know, mm -hmm. seeing what they're doing. Yeah. I'm like, I want to take Gambia to this level. Yeah. So I'm not taking their road, but I'm like, you're really, bridging. You're almost bridging. Yeah, the events are kind of like the events are, are kind of like a stage to mm -hmm. where ecosystem try. Mm -hmm. So from here, from here, from from here, and then before they know it, we're there. I feel smarter so. today already. <laughs> I feel really intelligent. I don't know why. Maybe it's the suit, or maybe it's just what you say. But I feel super smart. Yeah. Right now. Yeah. So before we go on a break, right. I want to ask a very important question. Right. Maybe we should go on a break first because I think it's kind of okay. a you question need, you need. that you're going to need to elaborate a lot on. Okay. But before we go to that, I'm just going to ask, what have you learned so far in just like a minute doing all this? What have you learned so far for yourself? For startup guy? Yeah. Um. Does it have a... Do you see the future? Yeah. I mean, 
I think Gambia has a great potential. I mean, now I feel like before I used to be really like, oh my God, like this way I'm doing these programs and these people and everything, like the adoption and the understanding. But now I feel like, yeah, I think, I think I'm like motivated, like, yeah, things will get better. Yeah, so, yeah. that's great. Yeah. I'm, I'm happy to hear that. Yeah. On the note, we're gonna <laughs> go for a short break. When we come back, we'll chat more with Hamad Njai. Stay Thank tuned. You. Thank you. <laughs> One nation, eight tribes. We are the smiling coast of Africa. Gap-toothed, wide smile, rich melanin skin, radiant with the colors of a rich tapestry of cultures, telling one story of unity and beauty. Wrapped in the soft folds of a mother's sir, a kilifa's grambuba, we embody the past of our ancestors and the promise of our descendants. Follow the records of our history, this story that tells of a people watered by the river in the gleaming sun of a coastal nation. Listen to the folk tales, those old tales we grew up on. Lebon, Lupe, Amonafi, Dana. Hear the music of an entire nation in the language of its heart and mother tongue. Our tongues are heavy with the song of our people. Rich and thick, it rolls off like Domoda, Saf like Yasa, Bena Chinla, Nyokomo. Feel the beat of our pounding feet as we dance to the sounds of a throbbing drum, ageless in its rhythm. The griot's chora that speaks the wisdom of the ages. The sweet sound of a mother's lullaby bringing even sweeter sleep. We clap a melody with young and old hands, a symphony full of the pleasures of life, the joys of work and home. We are Gambian. Be sunyu chosanla, sunyu dika, sunyu bos. Welcome back to the Nde Odital show. I'm still here with Mamadou Anjai. What does the A stand for? Abdullah, my dad's name. Yeah. So, you know, with every um, business or startup, you're looking at me really strange. I think no. you're scared. No, <laughs> what no. I'm going to ask you, trust me, it's nothing to, that you're going to answer or you've never answered before, even though I'm known to ask very tricky questions. Right. So, um, what has the challenge been for you? You know, like Gambians, we like to, what's our word we use? Masla. Masla yeah, yeah. and say, oh, everything is great, everything is good. Yeah. But we've all been hit here and there, you know. What has been the biggest challenge for you? Because I think Gambians, we're, we're great people. I love Gambia. I'm just going to hug myself. Yeah. If I could hug you, I would, but we're in the corona season, so I can't. <laughs> but we're very um, comfortable right. in where we are. Sometimes, right. as much as we are so innovative, Sometimes we're very afraid of change. Mm. Have you experienced anything along the line that made you feel like, you know what, they don't even get me, or oh, maybe they think I'm a threat, or you know, maybe they think I'm exposing this? Because your job is intense. Have you experienced that before? Yeah, I mean, I have to be honest with you. That's, that's actually a very important question, mm -hmm. um, Rich. Sometimes. You know, I ask everything, just in case. <laughs> yeah, I feel like. I mean, I feel like that's a question that a lot of people don't talk about. And sometimes when you're operating in a space where you find all of these old people, like old guys that were there before you, and then... No disrespect to the older generation. Yeah, I mean, don't let us fire yeah. us here. No, first. no, no. I mean, <laughs> no, I mean, like, I feel like it's amazing. But, yeah. you know, the society that we're in, um, it takes a lot of boldness to get to where you want to be. But When you're a young person. Yeah. And, you know, like, when we were doing Startup Grind at the beginning, I feel like most people didn't understand our mission and you know like you could feel it it's not like it was coming at you but you could feel that like the people that you wanted to help are receptive to the idea not just they just they just don't want it but they don't want to be in that space with you i don't know for some reasons but there are times where in their head they could know that you're really really good but they wouldn't you know they wouldn't get you in that space so I knew that, that that could be a challenge to the vision of Startup Guy. And so what I did was, you know, I had to unplug myself, you know, like certain times, just not to get caught up in that situation where I would get in and then it could flush me out of the system. And it's very easy for people to do that. So most of the time, I mean, it really didn't matter. Like I'm the type of person that when I realized that in Gambia, 
that people are afraid of change and people will get uncomfortable. Like you would feel it in your own space. But you know, as you just said, like you don't engage that ego because your mission is mainly to, to change and to impact. So at some point they will accept it. But at the beginning, the people that you want to work with or the stakeholders, some of them might not really want it because- Because you're young? I mean, like, not because I'm young, but you know, like, you know, things Just, are like, okay. I mean, you know, things are different. People do things differently. Okay. And we all know it. Like my traction is, could be different from another person's traction. Yeah, obviously. We could be in the, in the same space and you could probably be here before me, but the way I operate is different. Yeah. Like my level of innovation, my level of traction different is different. from mine, yeah. And probably I could do it better than you, mm -hmm. but it really didn't matter to us. So I, so I was seeing these people because remember, like our movement was international, mm -hmm. like, and we had this. We were sponsored globally by Google for startups, and currently Amazon, mm -hmm. um, really sponsoring our events. But then again, like even that, like you are like okay, like you could feel the space, like the the support. Like I'm not asking you to help me, but it's like, like it's really important that you acknowledge the level of innovation that we take in Gambia too, because it wins. Like when you, when, when you look at the stuff that we've able to do, um, which I don't like to talk about most but of you, the time. Well, you can talk about it. But it's like, you know, when you look at most of the, the tech ecosystems, uh, I mean, across Africa, we've really stepped up like Gambia's, Gambia's image, you know? Like, like village capitals and few other platforms mm -hmm. um, that really, trust me, Gambia wasn't. But you will see, you will see the grind there. And to me, it was a good feeling. Sometimes I sit there, I'm like, okay, like, you know, like these guys are beginning to know Gambia and interact and, you know, like really help Gambia. And one of the partners, Africa Digital Festival, was even like sponsoring two tech startups oh, to awesome. fly over. Awesome. Like to me, it was, it was about why all these people feeling paranoid. I mean, you, I mean about the initiative, but it, you just don't understand it. So for me, my motivation doesn't come from there. You know, like I'm a very strong person. Like, and my motivation, it's in another space. You know, I could be in Gambia, but my motivation is in another space. I don't know where it makes sense. Mm -hmm. So it's like, <laughs> I could be with you here doing the same thing, but you will wonder how is this guy like doing this? And all I need is God actually, you know, and my team knows that like we celebrate we strategize, you know, we work on stuff and then we, we observe. And that's how I, that's how I instill those values. Your intelligence in is kind of dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> you have a dangerous kind of intelligence. Like, okay, like, and then like most of the time, I remember the last time someone was telling me, someone was telling me that you, we don't see you anywhere. Like I do it deliberately. Uh, most of the time just to I like to learn and every day is like a movement for me every day I'm crafting what's the next step mm -hmm. and it has to be amazing mm -hmm. you know and then with God's guidance are but you a perfectionist more 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 like that because I love Gambia so much you know like all my life has been here and I had the opportunity to which I thank God for to be exposed to a lot of international organization and work with those people and I could see what works great. Mm -hmm. And I could see these success stories. I could see all the spaces. So it doesn't move me. So it's more of about, let me take this movement of people with me. Mm -hmm. And then we form an army mm -hmm. and make Gambia great. You know, like what you're doing. So. Oh, cool. But how like, many people understand that space? Yeah. So this is the challenge. You are on another level. <laughs> so trust me, I'm nowhere next to you. <laughs> <laughs> no, like, yeah, I mean. Yeah, you're doing an amazing job. So what's next for you? You, Mamutu, and Jai, what is next for you? Okay, currently we've gotten into that space where a lot of stuff are happening. Um, one of the things that are really very passionate about me is access to funding. Mm -hmm. um, that's a challenge for a lot of startups, not only Gambia, but really having the access to fund your business. So what's next for me is on that line. Uh, Startup Guy has provided us with the network, the opportunity, the partnerships um, with the big giants to give back to the community. At the same time, we design opportunities that we want for these people. And I think that's the next version of me. And we've already worked on our game plan. We've already had the partnership. I was going to say, do you ever stop? And then you just went on? Yeah, I mean, like, to me, like, you, 
like to me like i'm not going to be doing startup grind like for the rest of my life but it has to build something yeah because that's what makes great companies alive mm -hmm. like if you ain't moving you ain't doing anything mm -hmm. like, like you know the americans use another term like it's like that's the movement like right now we're trying to build um initiative that's going to provide access to funding for a lot of startups and bridge the gap and allow and control it currently what we have is access to funding is really controlled by a lot of the donors mm -hmm. and gambia is gambia that's the truth mm -hmm. so, so how do people access this like if i had a business that i believe in right obviously you can't people are going to come with different interests and motives to right. want the help for whatever they're starting um to do whether they believe it or not how do you know who needs it the most and who doesn't because you're gonna i'll give an example we we threw out an application recently for the gam diaspora initiative and one of the requirements was to have a business plan Okay. Yeah. Imagine we had more than thirty people or forty people that applied. The business plan. Thing. But Can none we talk of them. About it? Yeah, sure. I mean, none of them could produce oh, a business God, plan. Oh Yes. So we only had three startups among all these people. They couldn't produce a single business plan. And I told so when my team member Jason called us, like, I was like, and we have already investors that are lined oh, up no. to invest. What are you gonna do? Need, I was like, sh so I was like, okay, wait. This, all of these people don't know a business, and we were like, you know, now business plan is really going off most most investors are looking for pitch deck which is like simple because an average pitch deck view is like three minutes mm -hmm. so pitch deck is very simple it's, i mean it's just like a powerpoint mm -hmm. um something that can sell your products and but you like, still need to have a business plan like it's a good backup it's a traditional it's way it's good but i'm just saying like in the in the other world like pitch decks are getting more common because like people don't have time and yeah. business plan has a lot of information yeah. which is also amazing but as an alternative, but if you don't have any, that's dangerous. That's what it's I'm like saying. It's like you don't know what your profit margin is. It's like your, your, your business you is on operating. suicide, yeah. You just operate. Like for me, I know like every minute I can tell you what's the revenue for startup kind. I can tell you like at some point, I mean, I feel threatened in my own space that this is not working. Like we, we do all of that. You need to know where you're going. Yeah. yeah. So this is the challenge. And like, I was like, oh no. like, And then all of these investors were ready like to, so that's like a missed opportunity for most? I mean, we're trying to help them. So imagine we have to recreate another time to probably help all these businesses to create it. Because it's like, the reason why we're doing it is because most of the, you've talked about the funding, how does these people actually, most yeah. of the funding, it's coming from probably donor agencies funding, like, you know, the EU funds and whatnot mm -hmm. that are giving loans and whatnot. But it's not enough. Like, there is no specified funding that's that's been controlled by Gambians. For example, that that could filter down to the startup and that's where my focus is because everything gambian is gambian like it stays with us yes if you're from the diaspora and you invest in a particular business and like i'm the investor and Ole is my sister i could put the money back home instead of sending like remittances is high in gambia right? mm -hmm. i'll give an example 20 mm -hmm. percent of our gdp mm -hmm. if those remittances were converted into investment opportunities mm -hmm. there's a whole lot of opportunity for the startups Absolutely, because yeah. it's controlled by young people mm -hmm. But most of the accessibility to the service is coming from EU control funds or whatever it is, which is amazing. Mm -hmm. But that's like we need our own stuff. And that's the direction I'm taking. Like I'm I'm not looking at in the long run VC opportunities and whatnot, but we're working on that. We have a lot of work to do. Finalizing that. Yeah. You're gonna get there anyway. Thank you. But this is amazing, you know. Um so are you based in Gambia? Yeah, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. Um, I don't know for, for, for how long, but I'm here. Yeah. You don't know for how long, but you're yeah. here. Yeah, what I does mean, that mean? Yeah, I mean, right now I am uh, doing a couple of projects um, um, that I need to focus on. And, and I see you work with different organizations. Right. Yeah. How do you balance your life? What do you do for fun? You seem like a very serious person. Do you ever... Let your hair down. You don't have hair, but do you ever just relax? Yeah, I've just, I've just shaved <laughs> my shaved hair it? recently. Yeah, I was this person with a very funny high tech, <laughs> and then later people just saw me with, you know. I don't know why guys like high tech. There's somebody in, in here in the studio right now that has one. Well, I mean, I think it depends on. I don't where, like it. No, I think it depends on where the space is. Like at this time, I'm like you know what, I'm going, I'm going to change. I'm going I don't to like high tech. It looks ridiculous, like a cake on your head. Well. <laughs> The high tech persons are here. So. I know. That's why I'm saying it, just to put it out there. Right. So how do you relax? Well, what do you do? No, I do have fun. Um, but like I know, like I, okay, I know when to have fun. 
I know most like I know like I'm this type of person that's that could be weird at the same time uh, because I heard you're a Gemini. Yeah, I'm Gemini, mm -hmm. and I know somebody who's also a Gemini. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Uh, like yeah, so I wouldn't I wouldn't go into detail yeah, in that way. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so yeah, I mean I do, but um I think I mean I just don't you know like most people feel very comfortable with life and in their I mean in their comfort zone, but I'm like I mean, it doesn't matter, like, you know, I I mean I just leave and So know. do you go clubbing, do you go nah. partying? You're a young man, I mean like what nah, do you I don't do? do no, nah, I mean like most of the time when I'm out either for coffee or... Coffee coffee. by yourself? Yeah, sometimes I'm with my friends and... Are they men or women? Do you have, have a special of, friend? Um, I don't have a lot of friends, but I have people that I talk to. You know, I'm the type of person that communicates a lot with people and yeah. So, I mean, my fun uh, mainly is just... To so basically, I'll say you have no fun. I Your do, life is boring. I do, but not not like how other people do it. Like you know, every time you're going here and there. Like, yeah, I could I could spend most of my time at work from work home. Most of the time I go out is when I'm buying food and come back home. You buy food? You, do you cook? Yeah, so, uh, I can cook chicken curry and all this stuff. So. <laughs> chicken curry, curry. and omelette. Yeah, no, really. That's what every Gambian guy knows. Yeah, I mean, you know, eggs. us guys, like, I mean, we just want to leave. I mean, we've been trained to take care of ourselves, so, yeah. Are you married? Not yet. Single? Looking? Taken? Uh, um, so, uh, <laughs> All of the above? Uh, very single, looking, taken. Looking. Looking. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> All right. That's on camera. It's on record. Okay. So don't be surprised. No, but I'm not, I'm not looking out there, but... <laughs> Well, looking is looking. Don't yeah. be surprised after the show airs. Yeah. You have a whole lot of, like, people in wedding dresses no, just very, running No, I'm very, you. no, you don't want to get inside. Like, I'm, 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 I have a lot going on right now. Like, yeah. Yeah, in that space. And, yeah. I'll fix that for you. Don't worry about it. <laughs> it's been great having you here. Before yeah, you pleasure. go, I just want us to, want you to tell me, um, who motivates you? In case you want to tell them something, who motivates you? It would be Alice Mokwe, uh, mm -hmm. Botswana. Um, I met her years ago. She is one of the few people that changed my life. Okay. Um, she is the current president of Federation International for Human Rights, one of my very close friends. Yeah. She is the one that looked at me when I was working in the hospital at Indus and told me, Modu, this is not your space. And until date, whenever she comes to Gambia, and very powerfully, but she is the one that texts me every time and like motivates me and that's yeah, it goes out to Alice Mokwe. Oh. He's the one that told me that always greet your mom for me. She's from Botswana, currently oh. in Paris. But she's she's one of those people that I can say really make me who I am today. That's my amazing. inspiration. That's amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. And to your mother. What yeah, you my to mom, your mom. Hey, my God. Like my mom is like super I was about to choke you now. Yeah, I mean <laughs> I mean my mom is like I mean I don't know, like I don't know how to describe her. Like, you know, I feel like yeah, it's it's super amazing. Um, you know, like just watching me over, um, despite my stubbornness and yeah, I mean, it's just sometimes having programs and or having a vision and she reminds me uh, to be humble, to be. Um, be very conscious about life and all of this stuff is just so beautiful. You love your mom. I can see yeah. the emotion. And it's coming now. And remembering taking, you know, like using her money, like the ones that we were supposed to use for food to give it to me to go to school and pay for those bills. And that's what made me who I am today. Yeah, she, she, she's very impactful. And don't make me cry. Yeah, so <laughs> I'm yeah. gonna cry. Yeah. yeah. Thank oh. you. Thanks for having me as well. It's a pleasure. Yeah. Thank you. I don't know what to say after that. So, but um, I just want to say thank you for thank you. coming, and this yeah. has been very you know, educational and enlightening. And um, you know, we have a lot to talk about. I think you should come again. Thank you. You should thank come you. again, probably with your team, and we have a talk about this. But thank you so much for coming. Thank you so much I'm for so having happy me. You also, were doing here. amazing stuff, and keep it up, keep doing it. Thank you. Doing we'll you. do it together. All of us. Right? <laughs> we'll do keep it together. Thank On that note, thank you so much for watching this episode of the Day Onital Show. I think this was really, really, really informative. I'm leaving this space feeling super intelligent. My head is just swollen by this guy. There's so much information I'm trying to process right now. <laughs> I hope I have time to do it. But do have a good night and bye-bye. Yeah, thank you. Yeah.